Hello and welcome to the final video in my garage re-roofing series. I've been working on this now for about 32 days off and on, although I've, quite frankly I've lost track. Let's kick off with a few things I've learned over the last month and a half. Firstly, you want to try and get a helper if you can. I would have completed this job so much quicker if I had somebody to ferry tiles up onto the roof for me. It's just such a stop-start process where you're doing everything yourself. I try to stack tiles on the roof like you see all the roofers doing, but again, when there's only one of you doing it, there isn't a huge benefit from this because you've still got to go up and down, up and down, up and down to get the tiles up there in the first place. And quite frankly, it's so monotonous. Once you've got five or six piles of tiles up there, it was good to get cracking to get them on the roof. Plan six months ahead if you can. The new tile lead time at the moment in pretty much any roofing company around the country is about six months. I would much rather have used new tiles than the reclaimed tiles that I've used on this project. And I'll come on to why in a minute. A couple of things caught me out, like the fact that I would need the, give me a second, the shorter eave tiles, these ones here, not only for the ease, but also up at the ridge. So I didn't order enough of those and ended up having to reuse some of my old ones and buy new ones that didn't really match. Same goes for the tile and a halves as well. I knew I needed tile and a halves at both sides because you don't want to finish on half a tile. So you tend to do both sides and then sort of match in the tiles when you get close at the opposite end to where you start, if that makes sense. So I knew I needed tile and a halves on both sides. What I didn't realize is that I'd also need tile and a halves to fill that gap. And the other point is when you order your tiles, make sure you order a minimum 10% additional amount for breakages, wastage, that sort of thing. Again, we'll come on to the reasons why in a minute, but with the reclaimed tiles, you have so many tiles wasted, lost, broken, cracked, that sort of thing. Let's quickly run through the tools I used on this final stage of the project. Wouldn't know what to do without this Ryobi grinder. From their new HP range, they're not paying me to say this, has been fantastic. Um, the other thing to mention is I would never go back to normal grinding discs now that I've used this diamond disc from Duro. I can't remember when I bought this, but I've used it on so many projects now and it just keeps going on and on. So when you buy a new disc, go diamond. I've got stainless steel screws that I used down at the eave tiles. I'll come on to why in a minute. Galvanized nails for the roof tiles itself. My tool belt, don't know what I'd do without this. I've mentioned the importance of it in the previous video. Same goes for knee pads. Hammer, obviously, 12 volt drill driver for driving in those stainless steel screws. You want a nice light drill driver if you're using it up on the roof. And my old Karcher pressure washer. I'll come on to why in a minute. Pedants among you will say you shouldn't pressure wash tiles, but these are in such a state and the pressure washer is so weak, you can hold your hand in front of it. Let's have a quick chat again about those reclaimed tiles. Why wouldn't I use reclaimed again? Well, in this situation, obviously I had no choice because when I tried to order the tiles, I was told there was a six month lead time. I managed to track down a company in Staffordshire called Cowardine where I got all my reclaimed tiles from. The problem was firstly, they were inconsistent in color, not massively, but you can see on this swathe of roof here on the south side, the difference. Again, it doesn't matter because it's now covered up with solar panels. But that problem piled into insignificance compared to the problem I had with mud and fungal growth all over the tiles. Now on this north side of the reef, I've had a major problem in the past with moss buildup, not to mention fungal growth. So the last thing I wanted to do was put the tiles on the roof covered in soil, which would be the perfect breeding ground for a new community of moss once I'd finished the roof. So yes, I did end up having to pressure wash every single tile before putting it on the roof, which further slowed down this project. Wastage, you've only got to look at my skip to see how many tiles from the pallets were broken, the nibs were smashed off, or just the wrong tiles have been put in the pallet. You also find with old reclaimed tiles that the shape isn't always that great. So there are a few inconsistencies on the roof. I mean, they do look great on the roof, but who knows how long these are gonna last. And at the bottom line, if you're doing this job, particularly if you're doing it single-handedly like me, new tiles are the way forward. It would save you so much time. So what was the general plan for this final stage of the project? Well, on the south side, before I could start tiling, that was the side I started first, there was quite a lot of faffing around working out the positioning of all the rails for the solar panels and all the hooks that supported those rails to the roof. Don't worry about that now because I'll be doing another video in a week or two's time explaining everything I can about the solar panel install. So anyway, I decided to start with the first verge, working up the verge itself, putting in the tiles and tile and a halves and cementing them in position. Now this was a real learning process for me. I've done a bit of verge work in the past, but it's always tended to be a bit messy and you can see the evolution during this job from the first verge that I worked on where you can see the edge of the tiles covered in cement a little bit right through to the verge that I finished off the other day 
where I've got the knack. It's much neater. It's not completely perfect, but it's nearly there. Like all these things, practice makes perfect. And it's all about not putting on too much cement so that when you squidge the tile into place, it doesn't come over the side and cover up the other tiles. Also, the positioning of the tiles is quite important. You want to get them lining up as accurately as you can in line with or slightly past the edge of the undercloak board so that you can cement in a neat fashion like this. Cementing in the verges for me was the most dangerous part of this project because I used my admittedly very sturdy Werner Abru ladder anchored safely into the ground below where it would clearly have been safer to perhaps construct a tower. My builder's bucket has also seen better days and at the very least I should have bought a new bucket and ladder hook bucket hook to free up my hands for a safer experience. What about the process of preparing the cement? Well, I used a combination of two parts builder's sand to one part sharp sand, the sharp sand giving the mix a bit more strength, and one part cement mixed in my wheelbarrow, which is a good place to mix materials of this quantity. I also added some integral waterproofer to the mix to give the sand and cement enhanced durability from the elements. And then for the trickiest part of the process, adding the water. You want the mix to be reasonably wet, particularly in the hot weather we've been having recently, but not so much so that it slumps when you apply it. And to apply the cement, I'd be using my old gauging trowel and small tool for finishing. The next plan was once those verges were cemented into place, I thought I'd work across each roof, gradually tiling from bottom to top. That way I was always able to walk along and have the safety of the battens whilst I was tiling. Never on this project have I had to use the ladder on the finished tiles. So I haven't unfortunately had an opportunity to use the big softy tile, the roof protector that you wrap around the rungs of the ladder. I have to bring that out on a future project. They haven't paid me to mention this by the way. Looking at the methodology for the eave tiles at the bottom. You'll remember from previous weeks the problems I had trying to incorporate the eave support trays, which I was determined to do because it's a far superior solution in my mind to using damp proof course. I overcame the issue with the bottom tile not properly interfacing with the tile above by getting my plane out and chamfering the, the bottom batten that the eave tile was going to be affixed to. And for the south face of the roof where the batten wasn't fixed at this point, I could do this in the workshop rather than in situ. Now, obviously in hindsight, what I probably should have done is gone with a narrower diameter, a thinner batten. Because these battens that I use in this project are quite chunky at just over 25 millimeters in thickness. So a bottom batten that was much thinner would have accommodated that eave tile much better. And I also bought this Tyvek double-sided acrylic tape to seal the underlay down to the eave support tray. I started by nailing the eave tiles in position, but as you can see, my insistence on using that support tray has left a bit of a gap under the bottom tile. And a bit of the tile above doesn't sit perfectly on the eave tile. So I decided I'd get more control over the angle of that bottom tile by using these stainless steel screws I bought from eBay. So once the verges and the eave tiles were in position, I then worked up the roof in this diagonal format, putting one nail in each tile on every other row. Now this is what the roofers did previously. A lot of people will probably say that's overkill, particularly with rosemary clay tiles like this, and you can probably get away with one every five rows. But anyway, I decided one every three rows was button braces. The other thing that I gave a little bit of thought to was how I was going to cement in position the ridge tiles at the top, because again, I didn't really want to have to clamber up a, a tiled, a finished roof. So obviously I completed the south side of the roof first, tiling right up to the ridge level. And then on the north side, working up in that sort of diagonal pattern when I got to the top and had a couple of meters of ridge tiles completed on both sides by this point, I was able to start cementing in place the ridge tiles which I cemented right obviously at both ends and then a big mound of cement in between where each eave tile butted up to the next. I left a decent gap of about 15 20 mil between each tile which gave me a nice solid strong joint that I could cement in position. This is the same technique that was used when the ridge tiles were originally cemented into place. Some of you might say you should be cementing along the length of the tile at the bottom as well. I don't know, to pre prevent flies and things getting in, but I haven't done that. Maybe I could pipe some sealant in at, at a later point. And obviously then as I carried on tiling the roof, I could keep cementing the eave tiles into position. Cleaning off any cement residue with a sponge. 
As the job neared completion, I obviously ran out of battens to finally walk up to finish off the job. So I ended up finishing off the tiling and cementing in place the final ridge tile from the ladder. So that's it, this project has finally been drawn to a close and I hope you found it interesting. Any roofers out there, if you want to pass a bit of critical judgment, I'm bound to have got stuff wrong, I accept that. It'd be interesting to know, helpful for everyone else if you put it in the comment section below. And likewise, if anyone's got any questions, again, leave those in the comment section below too. As usual, details of everything I've used in today's video will be in the description below the video, which you can access on your smartphone by clicking on the little arrow and on your PC by clicking on the show more button. And finally, if you chanced upon my channel for the first time, it would mean so much to be to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here and don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you get notified of all my future uploads. Massive thanks for your support and I'll see you all soon.